What's up everyone, Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and today we're looking at another knife from Three Dog Knife. This came to us from Northern Knives and this is the Riot. And this is kind of the, the baby brother to the Amok. And uh, it's going to start at around 270 bucks. And depending on the type of setup you get with the different steels, different types of, uh, of sheaths, there's just a lot of different options. So 270 give or take, it's going to run you from there. And then it can get more expensive depending on what you uh, what you choose for the options. So a couple details here, your steel choices. You can get an LMAX N690 or D2 tool steel. Your handle materials, can you can get it in micarta in several colors, G10 in several colors carbon fiber in several, color, several colors, and then they also offer some, some special requests. It can also be accommodated if they can kind of work with you. So certainly if you like this, contact them and you want something custom, they can, uh, they'll can do their best to work with you. Your overall length is going to be around 9.75 inches. Your blade length, 3.7 inches. Your weight is going to be between 8.5 ounces and 9.8 ounces, depending on you know some of those modifications. Your handle thickness is going to be 0.75 inches, and your steel thickness is going to be between 0.2 and 0.24. So uh, this this knife basically it was made to be a companion to uh, the the Amok like I mentioned before and also like the Severance a, a big chopper if you want a big chopper and then a tiny little knife you could certainly combine uh, the Severance and this as well. So basically they said this is a knife that's made to be used very aggressively when you're out there in the woods in the field doing different things. So um, I will tell you that you can see you know just the curve here of the handle that when you hold it. Very, feels very ergonomic in hand. So, you know, sometimes uh, you get a knife that's got this kind of a little bit steeper angle, you know, when, when it hits the blade, the, the handle's, if you will, bent there. And you're like, yeah, that looks cool, but it doesn't actually feel comfortable in hand or function well. But I can tell you that this does actually both of those. And of all the knives um, from Three Dog Knife, this one may be the most comfortable. I like all the knives that I've used in them so, them so far, but this one I do feel, I do find to be quite uh, comfortable. A little bit of jimping here on the top. It's uh, I find it less aggressive than the Mac, um, but it, it just that it fits into hand nicely. And we'll you know we'll take it out in the field and show you what it looks like in use in a minute here. Let me show you the uh, the sheath real quick. Here is your sheath. It is Kydex. So you're gonna you know obviously slide the knife in there. You got a Blade Tech Tech Lock on the back. And in case you haven't ever seen a Blade Tech Tech Lock before, you're gonna roll this little section away. Pinch these two sections together and then open it up and then put it over your belt, clip it down, snap it in, and then roll that back. And here's what it actually looks like in the sheath. So that locks in nice and secure. So that's basically your uh, your details on it. You know, this this knife, when I when I look at this knife. I think a good general purpose knife because it is a little bit thicker and yet um, you know the the grinds that they have on here I just found it comfortable to use not just for you know aggressive tasks even though it can be up to a quarter inch thick but even some of those smaller tasks it doesn't have the persuader end like the severance does or the amok um, but it's got a little bit of a, of a point there so you certainly could you know use it to break some things up um, the the nice thing about these your two angles here as far as your blade you know you can certainly cut like this but you can also push like that when you're uh, when you're doing some of the cutting options. So there it is. We'll do a little bit of work here in the studio, and then we'll uh, we'll take it out into the uh, into the field to test it out. Here's a look at the riot on my belt. And one thing I want to show you is that when I throw my fleece over it, you know, without having to pull down just where the fleece naturally falls, you really can't see it at all. So it doesn't sit very below, very far below the bottom of the belt. It's got the blade tech tech lock. And then when I want to take it out, push on the thumb ramp, thumb ramp. There's that. And here's what it looks like to put it back into the sheath. Now, while the blade is small, um, if you did have to get it into some drier wood that was inside some wood, we're going to baton just some small pieces here. So let's uh, let's give that a shot. Shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. Style of the blade and the actual thickness make it likely to be a very good batoner. And this wood is pretty uh, pretty beat up, but let's see if we can break it apart a bit. 
So we're seeing it's, it's doing its job quite easily. I can tell you just from holding the knife, I don't have any concerns about its durability when it comes to being used more aggressively. This, this type of task or something like this. There you have it. That's a uh, nice pile of wood that we got from batoning uh, using the riot. Very easy to do. And um, yeah, so again, you can't baton huge logs with it, but you could certainly do some uh, some serious work. And I've like once again, I want to say no concerns whatsoever. I'm not like ah, oh, I might this you know snap off somewhere. It's just really a uh, a solidly built knife. What I've got here are three different sticks, each one about you know 14, 16 inches. And what I'm doing is actually making a bunch of figure four deadfalls to keep as sets so that when I'm actually doing a, a weekend instruction class on wilderness survival, I can pass these around just to show people, you know, what it looks like to make them. And also as they're making their own, they could say, okay, let me compare mine to the one that was handed out as the sample. So we're going to use the riot to actually, uh, to put these, to, to carve a figure four out of these three. And uh, I made, I made one yesterday actually when I was a hike, but the battery and the camera died out. So I couldn't get video of that. So I'll do it with this. And we'll show you portions of the process and then we'll uh yeah you'll just see you know what the right is able to do okay so i made my first support stick that's gonna be the vertical stick now we're working on basically the um the first angle of the uh the four and this one's going to be the one that's going to rest like this within my figure four so you want to kind of smooth out this bottom section to more or less a, a flattened point and you can see that this wood is definitely it's interesting because it's rotted at some some spots and then very hard at other spots hunting season here in New Hampshire as you can hear some uh, some guns going off there in the background All right, so there's one end. Now we're gonna make a notch up here so that it can sit like so. All right, so I've got two of the uh, pieces done. This last piece is gonna be the trigger stick. And what I wanna do is just get all this bark off of it. So just to show you that it can do some of that, you know, that lighter work, I guess I would call it. Gonna try to clear this off quite a bit. You can see once again, it's definitely the wood softer down here sitting around getting a little bit wet for a while okay using the right took me about probably 15 minutes 10 minutes to get this all carved up let me just show you when it's finally uh, set I'll do it on top of the rock here yeah I guess we can see that pretty well so there's one piece Here's your top piece. Like so, actually, sorry, like so. And like so. So there's your figure four, all done with the riot. So let's wrap up here and give you some thoughts on the riot. First thing I'll tell you is that um, compared to the Severance and compared to the Amok, this one doesn't have a very aggressive uh, end, you know, pommel here. The other one they call it a pers persuader end. I just don't, I can't imagine using that a ton. Um, you know, maybe there's certain situations where you use a lot, but I, I, I don't think I'd be in a situation where I need that type of very aggressive end. So I like that. It's got a little bit of a point. I wouldn't even call it pointed. It's more rounded. Um, I know that this is mine is made of the N690 and actually says N690 here. So that's the type of steel that's being used for mine. Uh, anyhow, just the fact that that's not there is nice. I like the way it rides on my hip so locks in nicely again when you throw it on your um throw it on your fleece it can cover it your jacket you can cover it up so it's not going to get caught up on things and it's you know easy to take out of the uh the kydex sheath the the little bend there just hold it up like this you can see we've got you know not just the recurve in the blade but just the the angle of it it's not a huge sweep in the um in the angle of the knife but it is it's very ergonomic i did find it more comfortable with gloves on Though, um, 
I do find that it's a little bit for my hand, and I have large hands, it's just on the edge of being like, maybe if it was a tiny bit longer, it'd be a little bit more comfortable. So it's a tiny bit small for me. Um, and by tiny, I mean like literally if they add, added, you know, an eighth of an inch, it would probably be just about exactly what I want. So that's just a size thing, and that's gonna depend on, you know, the size of your hands and stuff. Um, it wasn't uncomfortable without the gloves, but it was more comfortable with the actual, with the actual gloves on. Now, the thing you need to be aware of with this type of knife is that, you know, as far as keeping it sharp, you gotta be able to work your system here. It's not just, you know, um, I would say like the Benchmade Griptelian that I have is, uh, I think it's the 551, really easy to sharpen on the stone. This one's gonna be a bit more work, so work sharp or a, you know, use your strop, whatever you're gonna do. There's, it's just gonna take a little bit more work to keep this one sharp because of these different angles that you have on the, um, on the blade. The other thing about it is because of the thickness, you can use it quite aggressively, um, but because it doesn't come to a real, you know, it's not a flat grind, it doesn't come to a real, real fine edge, um, some people might want something that's a little bit finer, a little bit thinner, uh, as opposed to, you know, as opposed to what you have here. But you can use this aggressively, you can, this, this tip, I'm telling you, that's, uh, despite the fact that it's not like, you know, a spear point or something like that, that's definitely, that's definitely got a nice, um, a nice aggressive tip there. I don't have any issues, I'm just double checking the blade here. No chips, no dings, no nothing. And again, I used it pretty, pretty aggressively. I definitely see this as a great companion knife. So if you have, you know, a machete, you've got a, an ax, you've got maybe a big hefty knife and then you want something smaller, this could be a really good option for you. Um, if you are in the field and you need to be dressing a lot of game, that edge right there up here on the top, that's gonna be really nice, you know, to get those cuts as you're skinning and gutting and doing all those different types of things. I often think when I think about using a knife like this for, uh, game preparation because I do more fishing than anything else. Um, you know, could I use this to? I mean, even if I was out and I caught, you know, two perch and a, and a bluegill, could I use this to dress those? Uh, yeah, I, def I def definitely think you could. Um, I'm actually gonna we'll test this in the future, and I'll uh, I'll actually try that. But certainly, with the, both this edge, this edge, and even your spine, as far as you know, getting the scales off the fish and then getting into the fish to to get the guts out and stuff. This is definitely going to be a it's going to be a good option. It's not a fillet knife, but it's not certainly not built to be that. Now I'll post links down below in the description to my reviews of the Severance, which is the big chopper, and then the Amuk, which is the large survival knife, and then the Mac, the multi animal knife, and then obviously this is the review of the Riot. I would say um, of all those knives, I think the Mac was my favorite. I just like that style of knife. Um, but this one's not far behind. So if you're like, ah, I like the Mac um, as far as how it functioned in the video, but you know, I want something that looks a little bit different, this could be a good option for you. So definitely like the Riot still quite a bit. The, um, the, the, um, the Amok, big hefty knife, but I tend not to be a one tool option kind of person. And I don't need to be doing a whole lot of hacking. So if I was like, uh, you know, it comes from Alaska. If I was up there and I was dealing with caribou and things like that, maybe I'd want something bigger like that. But for me, I would put the Severance really in a separate category because it's a chopper. And then from the Mac, the Amok, and the, uh, the Riot, this would be a close second to the, uh, to the Mac. This has been really fun to use. I think this is one that's going to stay in my rotation. Other survival knives or camping knives, stuff like that, I, I try them out, test them, and then, you know, I use them for teaching at classes and things like that or give them away to friends. Uh, this one is, this one's going to stay. I have liked using this one quite a bit. Once again, this is the Riot. I'll put it over here. This is the Riot from Three Dog Knife. And it came to us from Northern Knives. I'll put a link down below if you want to purchase this knife. Um, again, a variety of steels, a bunch of different setups you can get this. So the price range is pretty big, but I think you'll be happy with its function. And uh, I think it's just a, it's a handsome looking blade, pretty unique too. Thanks as always for checking out our videos here on YouTube. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids on YouTube if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Instagram and Tumblr as well. Take care.